what a charming spot for an assassination. Tell me, is there any place in Paris unknown to the son of the Count of Monte Cristo, Robert? I can't think of any I've missed, but it was your wish to go slumming, Lily. Is this really the wickedest place in Paris? It comes close enough. Why, do you wish to turn back? And spend a dull evening with my husband? <laughs> you amuse me, darling. That's my intention. Let's go in. Monsieur Dantes, you honor us. Uh, Madame, please, follow me. There's our man. So he's here. Your information was accurate. The champagne. And keep bringing it till I tell you to stop. Yes, monsieur. This is really delightful. How sinister. That uh, fellow who waited on us is Boucher. He owns the black cat. Has his fingers in half the crimes of Paris. Do you believe we shall see somebody's throat slit before the night's over? If they knew it was your wish, they would arrange it for you. But you can always depend on a fight or two. You mean these men? Well, the girls put on better ones. Women? Fighting? Incredible. Still, after a look, perhaps not so incredible. What do you think of him, Claire? It is odd to look at a face one has waited a lifetime to see. Memorize every feature, every line. Never forget him. Not so long as I live. Or he does. Don't attract his attention. Who is that with him? The Duchess de Vifor. Haughty animal, isn't she? Her husband is Secretary of State. Handles foreign affairs, you know. Looks like she does, too. <laughs> patrons, patrons! Permit the presentation of the evening's main course. The outstanding specialty of the black cat. The dish. It is novel. It is spicy. It flames. It scorches. It consumes. It is Suzette. <laughs>
Mademoiselle? Champagne? And uh, why not? <laughs> An interesting episode. The black cat outdoes itself tonight. And should this reach the ear of a certain party? Life has too few diversions. We would be ungenerous if we failed to let him learn of it. <laughs> <laughs> let us leave. It is better Dante does not see you. We have missed our opportunity. Tonight. His technique with the ladies is of the first caliber. Perhaps you will not find your eventual acquaintance with Monsieur Dante's as distressing as you presently imagine. The very name of Dante's makes my flesh creep. But if I must yield to his arms to gain our end... Yield? Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I have warned Suzette, a female of abominable temper. the thought, Boucher, but uh, one thing. Madame La Duchesse, I mean, the lady who just left, there uh, will be no gossip? On my honor, monsieur, what happens at the Black Cat is like a secret told in a tomb. You understand, of course, what I must do now? Whatever it is, if it only takes you out of my room, I have a splitting headache. I must... Challenge, Dantes. Are you insane? My name has been ridiculed and my reputation debauched. They don't bleed. I shall take my chance. And if I die, it will be far more honor than you have lived. If you must be childish, go get yourself shot. Madame. These affairs always be staged at such an early hour of the morning. It's tradition. Shoot a man before breakfast? Here they come now. This is senseless, Louis. Dantus is the best shot in Paris. We can still settle this matter with honor. No, no. It's impossible. I didn't want to say this, but your wife isn't... Really worth a duel? My friend, I've realized that for years. Lily has her good points, and they can be charmed. However, fidelity is not one of them. Dante's, perhaps there still can be a settlement of your dispute with honor. I hope so. He's my father's friend and a miserable shot. So, I might as well be dead one way as another. Are you ready, messieurs? Ready. As your physician, Edmund, I tell you again, you must restrain yourself. Your heart won't stand it. How can I restrain myself, tortured by the knowledge that my son will kill my best friend? Why couldn't you stop it, Andre? The Duke could not listen to me and ask for your son. I couldn't find him. Driver, didn't you hear me? Faster. Faster. It is understood. Ten paces, then turn. You hold your fire until the command. Are you ready, monsieur? One, two, three, four. Nine, ten, turn. Fire! Dante's, your father will approve of this gesture. Thank you, Martel. Oh. My son. My son. Oh. Oh. Put him in the carriage, quickly.
thanks to you. How long do you suppose a man with his enfeebled heart can put up with your constant escapades? I'll do anything I can. All I ask is that you keep out of trouble, or you'll murder your father. Those are not pleasant words for a son's ears. That they hardly do justice to the fact. You have my oath, Doctor. I will do all you ask of me. And I know you mean it from the bottom of your heart, right at this moment. But how do you expect to keep out of trouble in Paris? Every scandal, mongering sheet in the town was full of this unfortunate affair with the Duchess and her husband. You're a marked man, my boy. Perhaps, perhaps if I left Paris... An excellent idea. A visit to the family estate, the island of Monte Cristo. Delayed my father's recovery, I'd willingly go to the moon. The island of Monte Cristo will be far enough. Will you be needing me further, monsieur? No, Goyo, you may leave. You are certain you will ride south? Straight for the island of Monte Cristo, monsieur, and the family estate. I'd give a lot to poke around those castle cellars. You leave early in the morning. For my master, that means about noon. You lose, my friend. It needs no further explanation. Gorio! You may yet be a rich man. If you remember to do exactly as I have said. Yes, Excellency. I was in bed. Is what you have to tell me so important I can't wait till morning? When one has waited as long as I have, my dear, to waste one needless hour becomes an unnecessary extravagance. My greatest enemy, next in line to the family of Monte Cristo, is that. We each represent the last of three families dedicated to the destruction of one man. The score we have to settle with the house of Monte Cristo is a long one. But here, now, is our opportunity. Let us not fail. To the house of Monte Cristo and the heir of Monte Cristo and the destruction. You and Fernand will, according to instructions. There, that should do it. You sure look accidental now. Quite sure, Mademoiselle. Fine. Hello. Here they come now. Hide quickly, quickly. You both know what to do. Yes, sir. Be convincing. Yes. be of aid, mademoiselle? Well, unless monsieur is capable of magic in repairing this broken wheel, I don't... It is completely shattered, isn't it? It looks beyond repair, monsieur. Well, I, I must not delay. He will catch me. He, mademoiselle? Yes, my husband. <laughs> it's a fate to be avoided by all beautiful women. Sir, if I may offer a suggestion, there is a small inn a few miles to the west where the lady might find a fresh coach. It's a little out of our way. Well, I cannot trouble you. It's a pleasure, mademoiselle. You may ride Gorio's horse and he can... Oh, oh, I could not think of putting him on foot. But uh, yours is a magnificent beast, Monsieur Dante. You know me? Uh, does not everyone know the son of the Count of Monte Cristo? You were pointed out to me at the opera. My misfortune, we did not meet then. Would he object to bearing double? Since he's as much a gentleman as I, he would consider it a privilege. Uh. <laughs> 
Neatly done, Jean. You're aware of the next step? Yes, monsieur. Yeah, it looks like rain. We'd better hurry. Your Excellency should never fear. I shall not fail here. The speech, my friend, the speech. Yes, Your Excellency. I have no carriage. It has been hired. It will not be available until morning. There is no other inner coach within miles. I have one very nice bedroom with a fire. I'm sorry, but all my other rooms are taken. If the lady and gentleman will be seated, a fine meal and an excellent wine will be ready in a moment. Is that right, Your Excellency? Right. Your performance could be improved upon by a bilious parrot. Please do not vomit the words. Speak then. I hurried before I should forget. Idiot. You must make them believe you. Try to imagine that your new guests will pay you. Perhaps that will put sincerity into your welcome. Yes, Excellency. Yes, Excellency. But, Monsieur, I have no coach. It has been hired. It will not be available until morning. Then where's the nearest place one may be found? There is no other tavern or carriage for miles, Monsieur. Well, we're bogged down, it appears. I'm proving a terrible inconvenience, am I not? If all inconveniences were as pleasant, I could wish the world full of them. Uh, you'd uh, better change into some dry clothing. All my luggage was left in the coach. A guest, a lady of noble birth in her haste of departure recently, forgot her robe, if I may offer it. I shall not forget your thoughtfulness, landlord. Monsieur? A lady of noble birth, obviously quite above reproach. If my lady will accept. Well, now, landlord, I uh, suppose you must show me to my room. But, monsieur, all my other rooms have been taken. I'm in for a damp night in the saddle, then. Perhaps, monsieur, the rain may cease soon. Suppose in the meantime some supper. My wife makes a superb casserole, and I have just the champagne with which to wash it down. You're a sensible man, it appears. And we can eat in front of the fire. I can think of no pleasanter way to spend the next hour. Quite right, monsieur. I'll attend to it immediately. Your uh, teeth are chattering. Well, if monsieur will permit, I can put a stop to it. Are we thinking of the same remedy? It's quite possible, monsieur, since you were so kind as to suggest dry clothing. Oh, yes. I'll step outside while you change, mademoiselle. Your man asked for saddlebags as you requested, Your Excellency. Did you hide the horses? Yes, Excellency. Good. Excellency has forgotten to replace the bullet. My memory is superb. You may return these saddlebags to your master now. Yes, Excellency. To women in general, Mademoiselle in particular. Monsieur admires the ladies? I hold only one thing against them. And that. There aren't enough. I cannot agree with Monsieur about the ladies from where I've seen. And why not, Mademoiselle? Because I think there are too many of them. Whatever number of women a man may admire, there's only one he holds in his heart. Who is it? Sorry, oh, Monsieur. Come in. Come in. 
Your things, monsieur. Yes, thank you. Put them here. Yes, monsieur. And uh, tell the landlord I want nothing more tonight from him. Yes, monsieur. Look at the rain. Coming down harder than ever. Even nature conspires against us. You have some problem, mademoiselle? What woman has it? Can't be of any importance unless it's some matter of the heart. My husband. As I presumed. A matter of no importance. He's a vengeful man. My father forced me to marry him for his wealth. I stood it as long as I could and then I ran away. I applaud your intelligence. Now the rain delaying me. And delaying your husband, too. I'm so miserable, I don't know what to do. Let me instruct you. You are late. If you had to plow through five miles of French countryside mud, ha, sticks to one like glue. Good thing, at least, it stopped raining. Is Claire ready? For quite some time, I imagine. She's with Dante's? For the last two hours. And you've left them alone? That's arranged, own... in anticipation of your arrival. Dante's is not a man to be left alone with a beautiful woman. <laughs> I never realized you had quite such a strong sense of morality, Fernand. If it is aroused by your concern for Claire... Let's get down to business. Ready, my dashing young friend. Ready. The last room down the hall. Leave nothing to chance. scene of matrimonial infidelity. Madame and a tavern gallant. Back. I hope this assignation, Madame, was all you expected from it. For it is the last you will throw in my face. If you want revenge, take it from me. In due turn. First. I can't leave you to face it. Oh, this was not a duel. They'll call it murder. I'm safe. They can't do anything to me. But if you're caught, it's a death, a disgrace, a scam. I was tardy getting here. Did you mind very much? I played my part. And very well, too. Yeah. Open up. Our first act is over. All went as planned? Yes. Perhaps even better. Claire, I suggest that you leave now. It will not do to have the police learn too much about the past of the sorrowing widow. Gorio, tell Jean to get the carriage from the lady. Yes, Excellency. Landlord? Excellency? I trust you will keep our little secret. I've been well rewarded, Your Excellency. And I value my throat. Discretion is a virtue, my friend. Jean will take you to the nearest village. You will await word from me there. Very well. Au revoir. Two hours she was alone with him. Yeah? Claire and Dante's, before I arrived this evening. <laughs> My dear boy, heed the wisdom of ripe years. These outbreaks can lead only to indigestion. And since food is one of the great pleasures in which age may indulge, a strong stomach is beyond price. Two hours. Enter. I was awaiting your return. Pay me. I wish to get away from here. 
Does your conscience trouble you? How could it? I saw... Goriot, I am well pleased with your work. I intend to reward you as you fully deserve. Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> Tell me, monsieur, what are your aims in life? To have a little tavern in the country, Your Excellency. And a good wife to see the world as it passes my door. <laughs> a muddy stream in that chest, my friend. Open it. You will find your reward. Thank you, Your Excellency. But, Your Excellency, it is empty. There's nothing in it. How true. Yet, <laughs> it contains all you will need. Adieu. Why? We require a body, Fena. Where could we find one? More conveniently. What are you doing? Consuming the last of Jean Goriot and giving him in exchange a completely new identity. Now, us. Now, he has a nice, respectable past. A wife, business and poverty. A judge should take the murder of such a responsible citizen with the seriousness it deserves. for a moment from my window as he ran. It certainly resembles him. Although I, I am reluctant to say anything which might cost a fellow creature his life. Your consideration does you credit, monsieur. I am afraid it is the same young man. Then the identity is complete. And he'll hang for his crime. Officer, might I be permitted to address a few words to the prisoner? Perhaps I might offer some spiritual consolation. Why, certainly, monsieur. He will not tell where he is from, nor who he is. I doubt if your good intentions will mean anything. However, I wish you luck, monsieur. Monsieur? Yes? My name is Lorraine. I am a good judge of human nature. And you, monsieur, do not have the face of a murderer. Oh, I... I wish you could convince the police of that. Suppose you tell me your story. I fought in self-defense, but the only witness who could prove it, the girl, from what the police say, has vanished. Have they permitted you to notify your family? That's one thing I cannot do. My, my father has suffered enough. To learn of my situation might, might mean his death. How tragic, how tragic. But we must do something. I have it. An old friend of the family, a lawyer perhaps, upon whose discretion you might depend, if a message could be sent, would assist you in the strictest confidence. That's it. Charlin, he would be the man. I will get pen and paper. You write the letter. You may depend upon me to find a trusty messenger. Thank you, Monsieur Lorraine. Keep your spirits up. So, my dear Shanna, in my desperate circumstances, I beseech your help. But remember, under no condition must word of my predicament come to my father's ears. It would prove fatal for that loving heart I have overburdened too frequently in the past. So, counting on your assistance, trusting me. 
Love it. <laughs> His expectations of aid will not be disappointed. They will not. How much of this does Claire know? As much as I have deemed advisable to tell her. She has been trained not to ask questions. You should appreciate that unusual quality if I decide to give her to you. That was understood. Fulfill your part. I fulfill mine. If you had applied yourself as industriously to your law books as to your bottle, you might have made a good lawyer. Give me a drink. On your feet, sot! You have a case. Case? To send a man to the guillotine. There you go. This seems to be your advocate. Make it brief. What do you say? I am your lawyer, monsieur. Well, I... Monsieur Charlin felt it wisest that I should appear for you in court. I don't understand. Why didn't he come himself? Well, I thought that would be obvious, monsieur. Everyone in France knows that Monsieur Jarlin represents a certain most illustrious and noble family, a fabulous wealth. The moment he walked into court to defend an unknown Monsieur X, how long do you imagine you would remain Monsieur X? You're right. Naturally. As a matter of fact, Monsieur, it matters very little who represents you at the trial. It's a trifling matter. A murder trial? My life at stake? A trifling matter? Just between ourselves, monsieur. Certain portions of the legal machinery have already been, let us say, well oiled. The trial, I assure you, is just a formality. Why? I'm innocent. At the worst, I'm guilty of nothing more than uh, killing a man in self-defense. Of course, of course. But if we conducted your defense along such lines, don't you see what would happen? Yes, I'd be proven innocent. Monsieur, that trial would be a sensation. Mysterious man killed in defense of a beautiful woman. Every paragraph writer in Paris would flock to the courtroom. Oh, true. You would be proven innocent. But could your father withstand the shock of the notoriety? Ask yourself that, Monsieur Dantes. Anything's better than killing my father with another shock. Uh, that was Monsieur Charlin's sentiment, too. Uh, there's one other thing, Monsieur. At times, you may be puzzled by my tactics at the trial. Don't let it worry you. Just remember that at all times, I shall do everything I can at the case to avoid attracting undue attention. And the quicker we run through it, the better. You're certain everything is arranged? I give you my word. I have never conducted a case where everything has been so completely prepared in advance. It has been most carefully arranged, indeed. As you will discover. A good day, monsieur. Prisoner, since you still refuse in spite of the lawful demand of the court to establish an identity, it must be assumed such stubborn silence springs but for one cause. Your guilty desire to conceal a past of black and hideous crime. Under the law, we may not force you to reveal your identity, but I must remind you that in making our decision as to your guilt or innocence, where conflicting testimony is presented, the court must weigh such evidence as the manner of the accused and his past reputation. Do you therefore wish now to state your identity to this court? Monsieur Dante, I uh, have a surprise for you. It's no surprise. I have an excellent view. When's it to be? Tomorrow morning? For you, never. The judge seems to have a contrary opinion. Ah, that judge. Didn't you think he read the verdict magnificently? Just as if he actually meant it. What do you mean? 
It was an act. He cost a lot, but he was worth it. Bribed. Well, let's say persuaded. You see, he had to protect his reputation. If he'd given you absolute freedom, public clamor might have ruined not only him, but you. I... Imprisonment has dulled my wits. I don't understand, then, how it can be handled. <laughs> well, the first step will be for him to commute your death sentence to life in prison. Life? Don't get excited, monsieur. Once the shadow of the guillotine is removed, the rest is simple. A few francs here, a few francs there, doors open, papers disappear, and so does a certain noble prisoner. And all done quietly, neatly, and without a breath of public scandal. Money alone can perform this miracle in my behalf? Oh, well, not altogether, monsieur. You see, our friend the judge uh, needs a, uh, a pretense on which to base his leniency toward you. And uh, that's the surprise I was going to tell you about when I came in. All right, officer. It'll be brief as possible, messieurs. Monsieur Lorraine. Lawful propriety under oath. Oblige me to render testimony against you at your trial. But equal admiration for your gallantry induces me to offer every aid. Monsieur is kind. Claire. I have moved heaven and earth to find her. And here she is. I would have come on my own accord if I'd known what happened. This is to be your wedding night. Forgive me, my friends. Events have happened too rapidly for me to digest them. My wedding night? I was astonished also when Balmer first brought the idea to me. But careful consideration proves it soundless. Once the lady is your wife, she proceeds to the judge. She begs clemency for her husband. And she points out that the shooting was truly staged in her defense. All this is new evidence which and must thus, under... our friend the judge has the pretext he needs to commute your sentence of death. And the marriage itself, a nothing, a legal technicality. At the same time, I file papers for annulment proceedings. Annulment? Time is short. We must get on with the ceremony. Monsieur le maire. This must seem a strange place for a wedding. This is not the first time I've officiated in this prison on a night such as this. Do the persons concerned realize the solemnity of the step they are to take? Please join hands. Then I, by the power and authority vested in me by His Majesty, so do I now pronounce you man and wife, until death do you part. Bless you, my children. No time to lose. Take her to the judge. Uh, in one moment. Your signature, monsieur. Uh, to complete the legality. It's all right, just a matter of routine. Thank you, monsieur. Wake up, Belmore. Wake up, Belmore. We've got to go see the judge. Wake up. Oh, Dr. Book. What judge are you referring? I can't go through with this any longer. It. An ingenious piece of mechanism. We can't send an innocent man to his death. You lost your mind. No. But where's this compassion, my dear? Is he so handsome that you forget he springs from the house of Monte Cristo? I don't care who he is or what he is. I will not bloody my hands in his death.
to stay with her. Where are you going? Pleasant stroll in the crisp morning air sharpens a man's appetite. For breakfast. Get up. But you must speak to the judge. There's been some mistake. I can speak to no one. Come on. Train him. Well, then at least a message to Monsieur Lorraine. You prisoners are all alike. March! Come on. I have official permission to witness this morning's execution. There will be none. None? By whose order? Paris, monsieur. New government buildings are about to be constructed. Orders have been issued to the prisons to commute all death sentences to life at hard labor in the stone quarries. Paris is to be complimented. We shall know in a moment. They're going to fire a cannon from the prison when the execution is over. Do not suffer so, my lady. You'll feel nothing. It will be over in a matter of seconds. I heard no cannon. No likely to. Dante's? Escaped. The prison? Death. Sent by government order to the stone quarries. So he escaped the guillotine. I am not responsible for the whims of the minister. What more can you ask? Life imprisonment for any man of spirit is far worse than death, and still you're not satisfied. The picture of Dante sweating under the lash of a jailer has its amusing aspects. In or out of prison, Dante is alive. He's a great and immediate danger to us. Did a prison dungeon hold his father? Mark my words. If Dante's lives, he will communicate somehow with the outside world. I made that mistake once with his father. And if he succeeds, then our position has become quite dangerous. Perhaps not. If Dante's can reach outside prison walls, I can reach inside them. You have some plan? Boucher. Is there a prison in France where some member of his elite society is not presently languishing? A few thousand francs, a smuggled knife, and Dante's? I will not permit it. Let us understand each other, mademoiselle. Clearly. You have a role to play. You will play it. And if you slip, you will be in the center as we march to the guillotine. Inside. She is not to be let out alone to speak with strangers or to write anything which I do not read. I will guarantee that. seem to be honored guests here. You think they put themselves off for a steady customer like me and uh, my friend Hugo here? I'm no friend of a dirty little rat of a pickpocket. <laughs> Besides, I won't be around here very long. Well, I trust that applies to me. You? <laughs> you be around here till you rot. Besides, I got friends. They'll take care of me. your while if I can see him alone. You there. 26. Come here. Five minutes. No longer. Hey, 
you go? Boucher has a little job for you. Look at that. What? That fellow talking to Hugo. I've seen him before. He's one of Boucher's friends. Boucher? Boucher runs the gang that Hugo and half the cutthroats of Paris work for. Those friends are more active than mine. But I don't understand it. Boucher wouldn't raise a finger to get a swan like Hugo out of here. What's happening, Hugo? Boucher going to fix things up for you? You ask too many questions. What are the chances of getting out? My chances of getting out now are very good. I can handle it all right. I'm sorry. The rope broke. You are lucky. This is one way I don't want to go out of here. An accident. An accident, he says. Look at the smoke. It's been cut. You make no mistake. Mistake? I know the work of a knife when I see it. quite a time yet. You see this? This is to teach you more care in your work. this night. So will I. Beautiful! From now on, you're my bodyguard. <laughs> Mouse. <laughs> you manage in Mouse? Sure, this is a little one. <laughs> Smashed in like jelly. He'll ring no more necks in the Paris alleys. Good riddance. You haven't a chance. You've got to make a break for it. This will help. They'll send out the alarm for Hugo Boisset, number 26. They'll safely bury prisoner number 98. Wish I had the guts to try it with you. But they don't call me the mouse for nothing. If you make it, what next? A visit to Boucher. Keep away from Boucher. He's poison. Don't spread your wings too wide in that company. Let's get him out of here.
Me? Get on your feet. Who do you think? to announce the Baron Danglars, who wishes to pay his respects to Madame. The Countess of Monte Cristo. The Countess of... Yes, my dear. We're off to Paris today to establish you in your new position. What is that? Robert Dandies is dead. Cut off from the very prime of life, poor fellow. Murdered him. An unfortunate accident in a prison quarry. And now that our poor friend is no longer with us, let's be packed and on our way to Paris. You're in error on two points. Robert Dantes is very much with us. And we are not going to perish. I'm sick of this hole. I thought you said that to the world, Robert Dantes is very much alive. Traveling from one obscure port to another. Why must you delight in such complications? Let's seize the fortune. And have the police immediately seize us. Do you not realize why we must preserve the fiction that Robert Dantes is still alive? Claire is the sole heiress. That will that Dante signed in his prison cell on the night of the marriage. Unfortunately, is worthless. What I did not know until his father died was that the fortune of Monte Cristo was left to the nearest male relative. In this case, apparently, a distant cousin of the provinces. Then we're ruined. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because I did not have a solution to the problem. And my solution depends on producing Dante's. A living Dante's. Are oh, you playing riddles? Perhaps you will understand when I say that you have been chosen for the role. You're mad. I look no more like Robert Dantes than, than you. That is why we are going to the island of Monte Cristo. Claire and I will precede you. All the old servants of the chateau will be dismissed and replaced with others carefully selected. Then you arrive in the dead of night, the unhappy victim of a serious accident. And for how long must I sustain this insane fiction of husband to our dear Countess here? Have you ever heard of Sir Norman Blandish? Of course, the uh, international banker. The House of Monte Cristo's leading rival in the financial world. For years he has sought their various properties abroad. He has been told that the new heir is ready to sell out. He is now on his way to the island. But can we get away with it? Why not? The island provides the necessary privacy for such an unusual transaction. Demand the documents. He will demand stocks, bonds, signatures, and accredited witness. He will have them all. So Norman has never met either Charlin or young Godantis. And yet this Cristo lawyer, the Charlin, with the necessary legal documents, documents themselves will appear. But Monsieur Charlin. And yet, if he doesn't arrive, that very absence will arouse Sir Norman's suspicions. He will be there. I don't understand. Although you know him by a different name. Belmont. You have the brain of a devil. <laughs> I cherish your good opinion. If it works, what then? Sir Norman will pay us in Bank of England drafts, negotiable anywhere in the world. There is a schooner standing off the island night and day, awaiting us. And our fictitious Count of Monte Cristo? I think I shall drown him this time. Pack, we must be on our way to the island. And don't forget to bring your prettiest gown. While we await Sir Norman, we must have a ball to introduce the new Countess of Monte Cristo. Sit down. 
One move out of you and I'll make you twice as ugly as you are. Who paid you to murder me? Do we talk now or later? No, no, I'll tell you. He never told me his name. Just paid me and left. What did he look like? Old, old but elegant. A gentleman, soft-spoken, with an icy look about him. Thin lips. It's Lorraine, my helpful friend. Where may he be found? I don't know. It's the truth. I, I, I tried to have him followed, but, but he was too slippery. One word about tonight, and I'll return to drive this all the way to the back of your skull. Remember. Yes? Marie, is Monsieur Charlin at home? Monsieur Robert. Yes, it's I, Marie. Monsieur Charlin searched for you everywhere. Your name was constantly on your father's lips before he died. My father, he, he's... Oh, my poor boy. Didn't you know? How long? How long? Right after that letter you sent him. Letter? What letter? I sent no letter. The one in which you abused him for his cruelty toward you. Which expressed so much hatred for him. Hatred? I? broke his heart. That night when he went to sleep, he did not awaken. What conspiracy of the fates is this? Monsieur Charlotte, where is he? Where? Why, gone to meet you on the island of Monte Cristo. Meet me? What are you talking about? The invitation you sent him. What invitation? To bring you the documents for the sale of your estates abroad. Monsieur Robert. Monsieur. Welcome to the island of Monte Cristo. And thank you so much for these. Everything is here. All cozy? You lawyers are dull fellows. Smile! I have the honor to announce Baron Danglar, who begs permission to pay his respects to Madame the Countess of Monte Cristo. Why are you here? Sir Norman Blanchard says, do any are. You must be downstairs to meet him. I can't face him. Why this sudden change, my dear? Where was the tender heart of yours the night you trapped Dante's? I can't show myself. I'm a thief in this house. You will do as I say, are you? Yes. Look at that face. The face of the son of the man who drove Fernand's father to suicide. Who assassinated your father. Who ruined me. Drink in such inspiration. Understand this, my pretty one. You will do as I say. You shall play the role of the Countess of Monte Cristo. You shall play it flawlessly. And uh, nobody in the village has seen this new Count of Monte Cristo? Not a soul. Just keeps to his room. Seems he met with some sort of accident. Surely the servants must see him. No one has seen the servants either, monsieur. The old ones were discharged, and the new ones never leave the island. They were brought in from far away. Thank you. <laughs> Sir Norman Blandish and his manservant have arrived. Good. Valmont is with Sir Norman in the study. Hey, how is Monsieur Valmont's department? All the bottles are locked up with your friend Charlin. Valmont is quite sober, but he's not too happy about it. Fair now. Watch the gates. No one is to enter or leave. Oh, 
fell from your horse. Broke your jaw. This provides us with a happy excuse of bandaging your face. Just in case our English visitor ever ran across our late and unlimited friend. You told me this banker had never met Dante. I think not, but I take no chances. Put on your bandage. Remember, not a word. All your role calls for are a few nods of agreement and the bold signature at the proper moment. The signature, you can write it with ease. If I've practiced it once, I've done so a thousand times in the past month. You have 15 minutes before I return with the others. Tomorrow morning, we will be in possession of great wealth and beyond the reach of French law. Struna, waiting my word to pull up anchor. Tonight, Fiona, I have wiped out the house of Monte Cristo. And after tonight, the fortune of Monte Cristo will be but a memory. situation, isn't it? Two dead men who meet again. Don't you recognize your own boots, monsieur? They gave me the advantage you sought in them yourself. An advantage which now ends, monsieur. You may need this, monsieur. Enough that you and Dangler. Madame. Sir Norman. Sir Norman, permit me. <coughs> Sir Norman Blandish, Robert Dante is the Count of Monte Cristo. A great pleasure, sir. Although I wish I could see you in better health. Your father and I were old friends. The uh, doctor has forbidden the Count to speak. He fears further dislocation of the jaw. Oh, fall from a horse, you say? <laughs> Singular. I've had many a fall from a horse in my day, but it, <laughs> it was never my jaw I landed on. <laughs> <coughs> the doctor insists he rest as much as possible. So if you don't mind... Oh, it's a business, then. You have the documents and security days in question. Sir Shala, I believe, has everything in order. Ah, fine. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You see, ash balls, curious shipping. Seem to be all there. Of half a lifetime to get these. And now they're handed to me on a silver platter. Strange thing. Since the old man's gone, it doesn't seem to mean so much. The fight was more fun than the prize. Oh, the hymns. Pray be seated, sir, Norman. Oh, thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, oh, yes, Count. <laughs> I know how you must feel. Like losing one's pets. A 
And now, Sir Norman, the drafts on the Bank of London. Oh, yes, yes, the drafts. Uh, oh, no, sir, over there. Ah. Thank you, thank you so much. This is probably the largest cash transaction in the history of the business world. If one may regard these drafts as cash. They are indeed, sir. The same as you must know and will be honored in any of the commercial centers of the world. <coughs> as if they were gold itself. And now, Sir Norman. My dear Count, if you will append your signature, the transaction will be complete. Come see. No great harm done. I can duplicate these in a minute. If we may throw ourselves upon your indulgence, Sir Norman. <laughs> certainly, certainly. While Monsieur Chavin is about his task, let me ask your opinion on a bottle of my oldest wine to celebrate the happy results of our negotiations. Delighted, delighted. We will leave the Count temporarily to the comforts of his countess. Your pardon, madam. Your pardon, Count. Danglars are not going to get away with this. I'm going to tell Sir Norman everything. I'm going to tell him how you forged the letter that killed the Count of Monte Cristo. What you did to Robert Dantes. Yes, I loved him. I loved him. I was fooled enough not to realize it when I had the chance. Get away from me. I love you. I despise you. I see her. We're busy. This is an urgent matter. It will have to wait. Sir, this cannot wait. You pardon me, Sir Norman. Certainly. Certainly. Once Sir Norman signs, Danglars will leave on the schooner. As soon as he reaches a foreign port, he'll get the drafts cashed for gold and vanish. The Orient, perhaps. Blood is congealing. He has been dead some time. And who is the man in that bed? Get the rest of your men. Someone's coming. Cellar. Get Charlotte.
I've been looking for you everywhere. Been right here, Jones, right here. I must say, sir, that most extraordinary things seems to be happening tonight, sir. Foreigners, Jones. <laughs> Foreigners. <laughs>